right now on News Channel 8 at 6. It is happening again. Students fighting on a school campus. Good evening, I'm Keith Kate. And I'm Stacy Scheibel. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, a meeting of the minds. What can be done to stop the frequent fights at Wharton High School in Tampa? Earlier this month, 37 Hillsborough Sheriff's deputies all rushed to the school to keep the peace. News Channel 8's Chip Osowski joins us live from the school where a meeting is underway right now. I imagine they're trying to come up with a strategy to fix the problem, Chip. Absolutely, Stacy, in a packed lot here. And let me tell you one thing. A sheriff's office spokesperson told me the day that those 37 deputies responded here to this school, it took every deputy in this district off of the road. Kids fighting in high school, posting video on social media. This is video from a fight at Wharton in 2015. But this year, the home of the wild cats has been the home of wild behavior. Numerous fights and parents have had enough. I think that the school needs to work on controlling the students. My son's pretty tough. We haven't stopped sending him to school or anything like that. That being said, Brian Britton is concerned about the fighting. My wife's talking with other parents and maybe putting some kind of committee together, but I don't really know how far that's gone. But. It's a definite concern. You know, parents obviously are frustrated by it, and the administrators um, at the school want them to know that they are doing everything they can, but they need parents' help, too. School District spokeswoman Tanya Arja tells me there are fights at nearly every high school. It's not a Wharton issue. Um, these are issues. This is a, a small group of students who are causing problems, um, and they're bringing these issues into Wharton High School. Parents just want a solution. I'm concerned that they have put heavy police activity in here because I think it would scare the kids more than anything. And the district tells me that the day that those deputies responded here, only two students were involved in the fight. But clearly, any sort of a situation that warrants that type of response at a high school is an issue. Stacy. All right. Chip Osowski live for us at Wharton. Thank you. Parents are on edge tonight after threats were made at several schools in Pinellas County following the school massacre in Parkland. A 14-year-old student at Lelman Innovation Academy was arrested after posing with an AR-15 style rifle with the caption, Round 3 on Florida on Tuesday. The teen posted the picture to Snapchat. He told detectives he was just joking. There's nothing funny about this, especially when it comes to guns or any type of weapons or any type of threats. District officials are investigating additional threats made at Pinellas Park High School and Morgan Fitzgerald Middle School. To protect students from school shooters, Hillsborough County will conduct lockdown and evacuation drills this week. News Channel East Ryan Hughes is live in Tampa tonight to talk a little bit more about that. So how effective are these drills, Ryan? I mean, the experts seem to believe in them. Well, they do as long as there are certain elements involved to potentially prevent a shooting. Karen Freeman has six grandkids in local schools. Their safety is top of mind. But talk of lockdown and evacuation drills in schools has her wondering why. They're too young. Yeah. They're too young. I know. I don't think that's the answer. Retired police detective Jim Howard is now executive director of Trinity Security Allies, which educates churches and schools on safety and security. He thinks they should all have a plan. When you go through these scenarios and you go through these trainings, you remember it when the alarm goes off. You start to visualize it. You walk through it with your mind. Howard encourages school officials to teach staff and students how to quickly lock doors and windows and block entrances with furniture and even book bags. You start to save lives when you do the training. Hillsborough County Schools will begin beefed up lockdown and evacuation training this week. We have training, but we want to make sure that uh, these are, are good times to reinforce all those important points to all of our administrators and our teachers and our staffs across the district. And we're told each school will conduct its drills between Tuesday and Friday of this week. Keith? Ryan Hughes live in Tampa. Thank you. Tonight, a Manatee County girl is missing just months after her sister went missing and was found dead. 12-year-old Jalessa Shannon has not been seen since last night. Her older sister, Janessa, went missing last year, and her father was later charged with her murder. Jalessa's family is pleading for her to come home. Jalessa, come home and uh, stay at the house and listen, and we'll get you a lot of help that you need. 
If you have any information on the 12 year old's whereabouts, you're asked to call the Manatee County Sheriff's Office. A 14 year old boy in Pasco County has died after he was shot on Valentine's Day. And tonight, deputies are looking for Christian Robinson's killer. They say someone fired shots into a car on Ridgecrest Drive in Port Ritchie. Detectives released a composite sketch of the suspected shooter. Now, in Ada News 9 investigation, Foster Kids rides to nowhere. A 15-year-old girl alone in a car with a stranger for a hundred miles. Now, if that was your daughter, would you allow a road trip like that? A local foster care organization felt that it was okay, but that trip had life-changing consequences. Investigator Mark Douglas joining us now with the latest chapter in our foster care investigation, Rides to Nowhere. Keith, this is about the organization known as YFA. You may recall that's the same organization fired two weeks ago after allegations of mishandling other foster kids. Now, this case ended with a sexual assault allegation by the girl and the firing of that driver. In nine years, there's nothing in my work file for any disciplinary action. Solomon Atkins worked for YFA, the same agency Eckerd fired after we saw caseworkers keeping foster kids in cars day after day for hours on end in a Tampa gas station. During his nine years with YFA, Atkins says he transported foster kids from here to Seattle. I gave the children and the parents respect, and they all gave me the same respect back. He was a trusted worker, employee of the year, until the day one 15-year-old foster girl claimed he forced her to commit a sex act. She said it happened on a round trip between Bradenton and Arcadia, where Atkins was driving the foster girl to see her baby. One month after she complained, he was fired. Faster than a hot potato. A Manatee Sheriff's report says the girl waited five to six months to report the incident, changed her story, and had made previous rape allegations. The state attorney refused to prosecute based on lack of evidence and the girl's unwillingness to press charges for a crime that Solomon Atkins swears never happened. That is my hand of God on my mother's grave. YFA told Atkins he was fired after an internal investigation, an investigation the organization now admits never happened. Solomon says he would have refused to transport the girl alone if he'd known she had made previous rape claims. Never would have been involved and put myself in the situation. He now insists that no one should go through what he did. It should have always been two people transporting any female. I don't care if it was around the block. YFA tells it, it is, now has a no comment policy, always had when it comes to personnel matters, including this one. But a spokeswoman says managers are now considering buying dash cameras as a safeguard in the future. A little late for this situation, but maybe future ones. All those years of good work history and an allegation that the prosecutors never felt was worthy to even make an arrest or pursue. You kind of feel bad for this guy. And, and this girl, this foster girl, was she supposed to be in foster care in school somewhere well she's she's 15 years old the right. law says 15 year olds have to go to school and as far as we can tell she wasn't it was a weekday she was going to visit her baby in fact she told him she worked at burger king uh, instead of going to school he was encouraging her to go to school uh, the yfa folks did say that they can't force kids to go to school but like i said it's illegal to have 15 year old kids not in school they could have called a truancy officer but that's another story and they're also in trouble for that by the way in Tampa, where are the other kids uh, that we found not going to school, going sitting to school, at the right. Wawa, being dumped on the streets. So there's a bigger story here. All right. Thank you for staying on sure. it, Mark. A Polk County man beaten and choked to death and then found dumped in an orange grove. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd said that Christopher Taylor beat Douglas Bowling with a frying pan and a baseball bat for hours before choking him. His brother and girlfriend, pictured here, are accused of helping. And a man accused of yelling at drivers while carrying an AK-47 is now facing several charges. Hillsborough deputies say 21-year-old Raul Garcia Jr. is a gang member. They tell us Garcia was also jumping in front of cars in Waimama to try and make them stop. We have some new information tonight in a hit and run that injured a Dade City police officer. Pasco Ye County deputies have arrested 20 year old Marquis Wilson. In December, dash cam video shows a car running down officer Kevin Burns. Investigators now say it was Wilson who was behind the wheel. Officer Burns just returned to duty last week. 
Well, right now, the Pinellas County Sheriff is steaming mad. Yeah, coming up next, he fires back at the CEO that he says is responsible for someone forging his signature. Plus, the U.S. men's hockey team faces possible elimination tonight. Still ahead, our Annie Sabo is live in South Korea with a preview to tonight's big game. Record high temperature today, upper 80s for us. Felt like it too with the humidity coming back. This warm trend will continue. We'll talk about that and rain chances ahead. Tonight as the growing student movement against guns lands on President Trump's doorstep, signs the president may be softening its position and the IRS warning of a new twist to an old scam targeting your tax refund on NBC Nightly News. You must see Monday. Pick me, me. America's favorite singing competition is back with a new judge. She turned so fast, I got thrown off my game. And I'm going to win! Then, it's the premiere of Good Girls. This is a robbery! And critics won't stop raving about it. We're some smooth criminals. The premiere of Good Girls, following the premiere of The Voice, you must see Monday on NBC. It's right now. We got 15 seconds, Gloria. We're in the middle of February. Billy match, $1,000. You give a thousand. Billy matches a thousand. You get a lease for uh, $249 a month. Two. Kia Cadenza. Two cabins, well, one car. I just don't understand how he does it, but it's huge. Yeah. Everyone has heard about saving money on their energy bills, but most people don't think about their windows. The biggest energy loss in many homes are the windows. You can upgrade your central air. That will help. New appliances will help, too. But before you do all that, upgrade your windows with the Window World. Window World windows are easy to clean, energy efficient, and come with the absolute best guarantee in the business. Call Window World today. Window, Window World, simply the best for us. Billy Match, $1,000. You can lease a key cadenza. On all cadenzas, you put 1000 Billy Match is at 1000 That's two forty nine. dollars You lease her by a cadenza, you get two cabins, not one. So it's two for the one. You know what that is, Gloria? That is huge. Uh... Huge. Eagle 8 HD, ruling the skies of Tampa Bay. Brought to you by your Suncoast Hyundai dealers. Visit your local dealer today or shop by Hyundai.com. Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gualteri is fired up. Today, he told Aid on Your Side he's angry that Career Source CEO Ed Peachy is now trying to blame him for what the sheriff calls a scam perpetrated by Peachy's Jobs Agency. Gualteri insists that someone at Career Source forced his signature on records falsely claiming that Career Source helped place hundreds of workers in the sheriff's office. I did not sign that document. The other person in Human Resources didn't sign that document. And frankly, it annoys me that he says that we should have seen that because we cashed the checks. Give me a break. Okay, that's a bunch of nonsense. Is, is that I didn't sign that document. Don't blame me for your people putting my signature on a piece of paper. Career Source and its CEO at Peachy are now under investigation by the Inspector General's Office and as many as two other agencies. The U.S. men's Olympic hockey team facing a do-or-die game tonight. Coming up next, our very own Annie Sable talks with the players about what they need to do in advance, to advance to the gold medal game. That's next. Are you afraid of the dentist? One out of seven people are. Snooze through it at Monticello Family and Sedation Dentistry. Now through Tuesday, our new patient special is a free full exam, x-rays, second opinions, pictures, and a consultation. Choose Monticello Family and Sedation Dentistry. Cadillac XT5. Where's your mate? Beauty. Greater than the sum of its parts. Current GM lessees get this low mileage lease on this Cadillac XT5 from around $359 per month. Patiently, quietly. Visit your local Cadillac dealer. I'm John Morgan. If you have a social security claim, call Pound Law from your cell phone. Morgan to Morgan. Pound Law. That's all. Chief Meteorologist Steve Jervie and Max Defender 8, always on your side. The real estate market is hot and homes are selling fast. So why would you pay 6% commission? I'm Steve Johnston, founder of Ideal Agent, and now you can have your home sold by the best real estate agents from leading brokerages for as little as 2%. And for a limited time only, when you list with an Ideal Agent, we'll include high-definition aerial photos, a 3D floor plan, and a 3D virtual tour at no additional cost. So whether you have a $100,000 home or a million-dollar listing, we have the right agent for you. Call us today or visit IdealAgent.com. 
month of February going on right now. If you buy or lease a new get a vehicle, any vehicle, you get to any cruise vehicle. and get a cabin at, at, at Cruise with Huge in 2018. But if you buy or lease a new cadenza, you get two, two cabins. cabins. One, they even talk back. Listen. And and Two, two doors, <laughs> two cabins going on right now with there. the Billy Max. You put a thousand Billy Max is your thousand. Where else would you want to <laughs> buy? Going on now, it's huge. huge. Famous Tate is thankful to be a part of the American dream. In business for 62 years, we embrace the values of the red, white, and blue, as do the athletes of Team USA. Get to know some of our finest athletes on News Channel 8's Olympic Zone, Monday through Saturday at 7.30. Are you afraid of the dentist? One out of seven people are. Snooze through it at Monticello Family and Sedation Dentistry. Now through Tuesday, our new patient special is a free full exam, x-rays, second opinions, pictures, and a consultation. Choose Monticello Family and Sedation Dentistry. To South Korea now in our coverage of the 2018 Winter Olympics. It is winter go home time for the U.S. men's hockey team. And News Channel 8's Annie Sabo joins us live from Pyeongchang. And I know the dro puck drops there in just a few hours, Annie. That is correct, Stacey. It is the United States versus Slovakia, round two. Now, earlier, the U.S. men beat Slovakia 2-1 to one in pool play, but their most recent loss to OAR, the Olympic athletes of Russia, really didn't help them out because, yes, as you said, it is win or go home today. However, a win puts them back into the quarterfinals. I visited practice this week and asked the guys, how much pressure are you guys facing right now? Because it really is do or die, win or go home. They said... To be honest, we're feeling pretty good because we've got nothing to lose, and they say they are completely prepared for this huge moment. Well, for sure. I mean, uh, now it's uh, now it's so close. You know, uh, every little thing matters, uh, every little detail. And uh, you know, if you don't take care of those details, uh, you're the team that's going to be going home. You know, we know we've played Slovakia already. We know what they bring. The, you know, big, strong group. So. We have to use our speed, our tenaciousness, and, and you know, and just try to you know, put more pucks in the net. And Stacy, as you mentioned, puck drop is just in a few hours or so. So I expect to see a lot of Team USA jerseys standing right behind me here in Olympic Park because the hockey arena where the men play is right next door to where I'm standing, guys. All right, from men's hockey to women's hockey, they're moving in to the gold medal round, correct? That is correct. They beat Finland 5-0 to zero yesterday, obviously scoring goals, not a problem for the women. But yes, they're taking on Canada in the gold medal game. As you recall, back in Sochi, Canada knocked the U.S. women out. They took home silver. Canada took home gold. Canada has actually beaten the U.S. women the last two times in the Olympics. I expect to see a very heated game on the ice between these two teams. They don't like each other very much, but I am liking our, our Wesley Chapel friends, the United States women's team's chances tomorrow, guys. We hope both teams do well. Thanks, Annie. Thank you, Annie. And so what's coming up tonight on NBC's primetime coverage of the Olympics? Well, you have more figure skating. This is the ice dancing gold medal finals. Women's freestyle skiing also tonight and the two-man bobsled. It begins at 8 o'clock right here on News Channel 8. And Norway now has a commanding lead in the medal standings with 28 medals total. Germany is second with 20, followed by Canada, the Netherlands, the Olympic athletes from Russia, and finally the U.S., which is in sixth place with 10 medals. And you could catch Annie Sabo's live reports from South Korea throughout the Olympics right here on News Channel 8. Now, Max Defender 8, the world's most powerful radar, and your Storm Teammate forecast with Chief Meteorologist Steve Jervie. Well, Max Defender 8 is picking up a few sprinkles. Fires today, too. Smoke from fires. And you can see uh, this little one here south of Venice pushing offshore. Very light stuff overall. Maybe a few inland sprinkles, too. And with the temperatures the way they are, with the humidity where it is, not completely unusual. You'd see a few scattered light showers. But we really haven't had any rain in our forecast, probably less than 10%. Big ridge of high pressure. That's the red color. Dry air aloft. 
Uh, much more moisture across the central part of the country, adding up to rain, inches of rain for those areas that will see consistent rain around that ridge of high pressure. Trade Winds Islands, what a beautiful view of the St. Pete Beach here, 76 degrees. Uh, got a bit of an onshore flow. It is cooler on the beach, near perfect, it looks like, after that warm high today. And here at Florida, cancer specialist, 81 degrees with an east wind. We do have a few clouds there on the horizon, but overall it's uh, beautiful weather. Record warm temperature, 88 degrees, incredible. 86 degrees, the previous record in 1997, so 15 degrees above, 15 degrees above our average. Warm February, including today's record high, 14 days in a row now, 80 degrees plus, the longest stretch since mid-October. We are there. Eight-day temperature forecast. We're all the way up at the top here, given the time of year, of course. 85, 86 degrees forecast highs. Normal average high, 73. Nowhere near that. Uh, this is a beautiful shot from Tony Colon in Lakeland today. It looks like a nice nature hike while the rest of us had to work, but good for you, Tony. Nice day. The marine forecast calling for southeast winds at 5 to 10. Seas 1 to 2. Just a light chop on bay and inland waters. Also, interesting to note, because of the warm temperatures, things start to bloom so the pollen very high Tuesday Wednesday Thursday you can see all in the high category so if you're noticing that sensitive to it well there you go 75 degrees at 9 p.m. 69 degrees at 7 a.m. 85 at 4 p.m. so another warm day expected could be warmer could be a little bit cooler than that potentially in the afternoon if winds are light enough you'll see a bit of a sea breeze on the coastal areas 85 degrees current temp Tampa International should head into a mild evening for us 81 Wiki Wachee Plant City 77 Northport but these are the current numbers in the northern part of the country Single digits, Bismarck, Winnipeg, one degree, zero in Rapid City. But the southeast and really much of the eastern seaboard, warm, 74 Cincinnati, so some warm conditions. High pressure is situated right here. If you kind of look at it, you can see, you see that counterclockwise motion and how this ridge of high pressure dominates, kind of preventing this cold front from moving in. So all the precip riding up and over the ridge, that's where the difference between cold air and warm air meet, and that's where the showers are produced. This evening, mostly clear, warm, beautiful night to get outside. Tonight, Tuesday morning, could be some patchy fog to start the day. That's probably true the next couple of mornings, especially if winds are light. And then for Tuesday afternoon, similar kind of day, warm, uh, beautiful Conditions, partly cloudy skies in the afternoon, temperatures mid, and potentially upper 80s like we saw today. May ease off a little bit as we get into the weekend, but most of this week is well above our average high of 73 degrees with this ridge of high pressure. I wonder how many times I said ridge of high pressure. Last week, probably about 500. So uh, get used to hearing that, ridge of high pressure. It'll it's kind of like the men's mom. hockey team, do, it, do or die. We've heard that about 100 <laughs> times. Or go too, home. So. That's my catch. <laughs> Ridge of high pressure. All right. Thank you, Steve. All right. And sports is coming your way next. There's a common threat I see every time I'm in the field. While this was burning, you were saving other homes. Neighbors helping neighbors and strangers alike. This is what America's about. Sometimes it's nice to see all the good that's out there. Bringing folks out, we have seen it in community after community. Alpine skiing combines neck-breaking speed and finely tuned skills. Hours of training and devastating falls all make the athlete. However, they also have to start somewhere. Oh. Oh. The thrill of downhill, tomorrow at 5. Heads up, everybody. Why Stadium Toyota? They make it real. For real deals, go here. Stadium Toyota, anytime, anywhere. Are you afraid of the dentist? One out of seven people are. Snooze through it at Monticello Family and Sedation Dentistry. Now through Tuesday, our new patient special is a free full exam, x-rays, second opinions, pictures, and a consultation. Choose Monticello Family and Sedation Dentistry. Living with chest pain was limiting what my husband could do. When he was turned down for heart surgery, we learned about protected PCI with Impella, a treatment option for some high-risk heart patients who are not candidates for bypass surgery. If you or a loved one have been turned down for heart surgery, ask your doctor and visit Impella.com to learn about the procedure and see if it may be an option for you. We're so grateful to our heart team that protected PCI with Impella was an option for him and us. as the Rays celebrate their 20th anniversary season. Free single-game tickets are on sale now. Swing and a run! The Rays have hit the walk-off homer! Be 
their opening day against the Red Sox and see other premier matchups against the Yankees, Braves, and more. 20 minutes of commercial-free news, weather, and traffic beginning at 7 a.m. News Channel 8 today on Grade 38. Sponsored by Moss Nissan. Whatever it takes. Just let go. Time and temperature brought to you by Tradewinds Island Resorts Just on St. Pete Beach. Your staycation destination. JustLetGo.com. Are you afraid of the dentist? One out of seven people are. Snooze through it at Monticello Family and Sedation Dentistry. Now through Tuesday, our new patient special is a free full exam, x-rays, second opinions, pictures, and a consultation. Choose Monticello Family and Sedation Dentistry. Heads up, everybody. Why Stadium Toyota? Service and satisfaction. Oh, yeah. To get it, go here. Stadium Toyota. Anytime, anywhere. News Channel 8 Sports is brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Well, the Rays held their first full squad workout today at spring training, only it didn't feel like the band was all together. Jake Odorizzi, Corey Dickerson are gone after the weekend. Evan, Lor Evan Longoria, of course, is gone. Free agent players are gone. Everybody's gone. Uh, it's not exactly the march to October right now. Uh, over the weekend, former Rays third baseman Evan Longoria questioned the Rays front office for the Odorizzi trade and the removal of Dickerson from the roster. Current Rays players like Kevin Kiermeyer have opinions as well, and it's getting tougher to keep them internal, although Kiermeyer acknowledged the business side of the Dickerson decision. You know, I tip my hat to the organization for at least thinking about Corey in that aspect. But, you know, still from the competitive side, it's like, you know, I, I lost a really good friend, really good teammate, really good player. But like I said, with all due respect to Corey, life, life goes on for us here. And, um, you know, I had, a, I had a great two years playing next to him, and I wish him nothing but the best. Well, and another effort to speed up baseball games this year. Major League Baseball announced a couple of changes today. It's going to affect the pitchers. Only six visits to the mound are allowed now in games. And the one I found interesting, innings will have a two-minute and five-second commercial break. It's a language we speak here. Uh, then they're going to begin play whether or not the pitcher has completed his eight warm-up pitches. They feel like us now. All right, hey, the Motorsports Museum at Daytona International Speedway has a new exhibit. Austin Dillon placed his Daytona 500 winning car in the museum this morning. It's a Daytona tradition that's more than two decades old. Very cool. And uh, that's just one of the life-changing spoils that a NASCAR driver gets for winning the Great American Race. But not every fan was thrilled with seeing Dylan take the checkered flag. Now, a lot of fans liked seeing the famous number three car back in victory lane, but it happened under tough circumstances. Dylan pushed up into the 10 car of Tampa's Eric Almarola on the final lap, sending Almarola into the wall. Now, Almarola said after the race there was no foul. Dylan explained the move. Well, I had a good shove. Eric was out front. He's kind of a sitting duck. When you get some help from behind, the 43 was the next car to my back bumper, and he gave me that shove, and I had momentum. He tried to block it, and when it did, I, I, I clipped him, and I hit him carrying more momentum than he had. So part of it, though, it's, it's racing here at Daytona. You know, I'd done the same thing. I would have blocked him, and I would probably got wrecked. So it's part of it. I'll tell, I'll tell you what. Not many people are talking about where there's some careless driving earlier that took out some very big names. Oh, yeah, Jimmy Johnson, a bunch of people went yeah, out early. Yeah, exactly. That, that whole race was just fun to watch at the <laughs> end, was, though. I mean, everybody was, good, was out. It was a great ending, and Saturday's race as well was awesome. I was watching because Aaron Rodgers was there with Danica Patrick. <laughs> yes, yeah. That was the yeah, Hollywood didn't catch part of him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back here. Uh, I after guess the we'll, Olympics, yeah, too. After the Olympics, and at 7. It's time for...